Hey, glad to be back with you today. I'm going to work a little horse that uh, uh, I spent about five minutes with, and I found out she's she's been round pin quite a bit. She's under saddle. Uh, she's just come to us. I think she's had about a year, year and a half off, and they wanted us to come and do a little trail riding with her and just give her a little bit more exposure uh, from her initial uh, 30 days of training. One of the things I found with this horse when I worked with her uh, just a few minutes ago was her turns in the round pen. And as soon as you would ask this gal to make a turn, she just turns out. And she automatically throws her butt to you. She rolls around going out and back off the other way. Um, I know there are several people that, that when they work in the round pen, that's what they do. I really have never found a reason that I want to turn a horse away from me. And I think a lot of it boils down to they don't have the patience, the time. Um, some of them don't have the knowledge of what it takes to draw the horse in and make things a little more comfortable. I never want the horse thinking that the outside of this circle, there is relief. All the relief is inside the circle, is inside towards me. Now, if I present myself positively to the horse, the horse will start understanding and recognizing that. But as we build on that, we'll build to a situation where the horse will always, when you walk into the paddock, when you walk into the uh, stall, when you walk to the pasture, that the horse will immediately turn and start facing up to you. And it's, you know, people can say, well, that's a respect thing. Uh, horses don't understand the respect thing. What it is, it makes it a whole lot easier to catch a horse when you're looking at them between the eyes than looking at them between the heels. And uh, that's kind of one of the best ways about it that I want to put it. And also, if a horse ever asks a concern with me, I don't want to make myself so available to the hind end of that horse. So we're going to start this little uh, buckskin. Uh, you'll notice she's built, she's like a Miss Arnold Schwarzenegger. She is really, really built. She's a foundation bred quarter horse. Uh, I was looking at her papers yesterday. She's got some neat, good stock in her. And uh, she's got a neat mind on her. I think she's actually about seven or eight years old, uh, but she hasn't been ridden in quite a while. We're just kind of uh, getting her back, and we're going to start her on cows also while she's here. So uh, she's friendly. She doesn't have a problem with people. Um, everything is really positive about that. I just want her to take those turns and uh, look back at me, check in, what do you want, Jim? Because a lot of times those turns are not turns as much as they are, hey, you can stop and rest and we can visit and talk about things. So as you can see, she doesn't have a problem with people, but I just, you know, as I start working uh, at Liberty with a horse, turning them loose in the round pen, I think it's my first opportunity to start creating a little bit of leadership. I tell you when to go left, I tell you when to go right, I tell you when to stop, I tell you when to walk, trot, and canter. So it's not about running round and round and round and round until I get them tired. It's about moving the horse around at different gates, different transitions, to that horse and I start having a good conversation. Conversation always depends on what? Two different interactions or two different actions. Me and the horse communicating back and forth. And that's what good round pin work creates. So we'll give her a place to go. Ask her to move off. She's immediately... Had no problem. She was going to the rail and was going to turn left. I'm going to ask her to move on this way. So I'm not going to push her hard. That's not my goal in here. I'm happy with a nice little trot. She hasn't been worked much, even though she looks that she hasn't been worked much at all. So you know, she's kind of muscle bound. So she's a little stiff. You can see how hard she slams in her front feet. Real heavy on her front end. And just uh, consistent work is going to change that. I don't want to have to do a whole lot on her saddle. Just kind of get out of her way and before long, she'll start learning those things. So I'll get her around to a good place for the camera and I'm going to ask for her to draw to me and make an inside turn, not an outside turn, and let's see what happens with it. You see right there, that's what we're going to work on today. All I did was present just a little bit of pressure to the front of that horse that slammed her into the fence and she turned off the other way. 
I'm not going to scold her for what she did right there. She did what somebody, uh, I'm, I'm going to say because they allowed, what somebody has taught her to do. But it's not a behavior that I find beneficial or acceptable when working with a horse. So I'm going to get her moving back the other way, and we're going to play what I'm going to call a cat and mouse game. Is I'm just going to keep on, keep on creating an opportunity to do the right thing. You'll see me, if she does the wrong thing, I'll create a little energy. You'll see me kind of change that up in her, and then we'll just keep working and working. So my goal is not to run her and run her and run her, or my goal is not to get overly aggressive with her. My goal is to start drawing that horse instead of running that horse away. So we'll try it again. Says that's acceptable. Since I did pick that side, and we're going to work on that side. I'm going to pick that trot back up. There. watching this inside ear, and watching that eye, watching that horse, and I want to see that head and that thought draw to me. She's either thinking about me or she's thinking about something outside. I actually missed a chance right there because she looked at me, but I could have taken that advantage. I'm going to try to draw back and see what happens. She turns in, or excuse me, she turns out, and I'm going to push her on. I'm going to draw back again. If she turns out, I'm going to tell her that was the wrong thing. I'm going to draw back again. See what happens. First half. And these little quick bursts of energy when she turns the wrong way, that's all she needs to understand that something's just not quite right with what she's doing. Well, there was a thought right there. There. So I'm going to take that right there and give her a little break. Now, I had the advantage, there were a couple of people there, uh, just on the outside of her. So we kind of changed her thoughts. She didn't want to turn in the limb because that was too much energy on the outside. So I kind of took that as an advantage to help me draw her to the inside. So I didn't get real loud with her. I didn't get angry with her. I just said, sweetie, that's not the right thing. Let's try something different. She decided she wanted to start investigating leaves. I'm going to move her back around the pen. There. So she's found comfort going clockwise. Now she's got to find it going counterclockwise. There. take that right there. She looked in at me, if y'all saw that. Maybe, what am I doing? Am I, is this okay? Is this all right? And I took advantage of that and saw that I could draw her at that moment. So we'll try to keep a little energy, just enough energy where she wants to think about facing me. <coughs> Doesn't bother me at all that she walks in. I'll stop her right there. Just let her visit with me. Again, she's not afraid of people. She respects people. She's comfortable with people. So there's some things that I'll have to work on a little more with her uh, and, and building that trust in people. She's pretty trusting. And she doesn't turn out because she's afraid. She turns out because she's been allowed to and she thinks that's what she's supposed to do. So we'll offer it again up in this direction. I'll give her a place to go. That was actually a nice way she changed directions. So I'm going to take advantage of that turn, even though I didn't want her to. She turned the right way. And I'll let her go and circle her toe. Kind of watch her head, watch her ears, watch her brain. Just see what I can get going, see if I get something thinking about me, drawing to me, 
maybe I think I'll try it about right here and let's see what happens. Oh, there, good, good. So as you saw there, she went to stop, turn out. She says, oh, I don't think I'm supposed to. I think I'm supposed to go the other way. I kept the pressure off of her. I waited, but she made a decision on what she wanted to do. She turned right back in. She stopped, she faced up. I'm happy with it, have no problem with that. Now some people might have a little concern with their horses facing up in the beginning. And really it's not the safest thing in the world when you first start working a horse that's maybe Maybe you got a wild Mustang, or you got a horse that just come off the range and you started working them. Getting horses in the habit of facing up all the time sometimes can be somewhat dangerous because once they start facing up, and then we advance to putting them in the saddle, we advance to uh, a lot of heavy desensitizing things. When that horse gets afraid and they're always facing, facing, facing you, they're going to run straight to you because you are their savior. And if I put too much emphasis on that horse facing up, it can kind of put me in a bad situation. But, uh, you know, I kind of do it in a, in a level to where as the confidence in the horse and the abilities of the horse starts coming up, I want that horse to start learning to face up to me and work with me that way. So we kind of want to keep that in thoughts. All right.